In this section we'll have a look at the concept of affordance and consider how we can use it to help better design our interfaces. In terms of what affordance is, well this harkens back to Don Norman in 2002 and his published book The Design of Everyday Things, which absolutely you should get and you should read because it's a really fascinating read. Inside that, Norman defines affordance as, as the perceived or actual properties of, of a thing, an object, and is those primarily sort of physical properties or as we see them or perceive them that help us understand how we can interact with that particular object. So for example, you, you can see here on the screen we've got a teapot and it has a curved handle and we've learned that we can wrap our fingers around and grasp that curved handle and use it to move the object around. And like us with a door handle that we can wrap our fingers around the handle and twist it around an axis or a pivot point. Affordances are things that are learned when we are young. Uh, that both includes physical and it also includes digital objects as we interact with, with different elements. Um, they are fundamental aspects of actually shaping how we do interact with the environment and because they're learned behaviours and because they're learned at a fairly young age, quite often we're not consciously aware of them. We just look at something and we assume, okay, this is how we should or can interact with it, but it is learned behaviour. If we think about physical objects, mostly we use our, our hands to manipulate physical objects and there's a reasonably small set of affordances that we use. So things that are handle shaped, we, we grip them with our hands. If we have a, a flat plate that is sticking out, we're, we're, generally that provides us a visual hint that we can push on that flat plate and something should happen. If we have round objects, we rotate them if they're small with our fingers, if they're large, potentially with both hands. Um, if an object's on a particular axis or grid, we know to grasp it and then to move it along that. So there's a whole set of, of affordances that are very commonly used across the physical objects. And designers build these in, in terms of enabling us to know effortlessly how we interact with those physical objects. If you think about digital objects and the types of ones that we may expose through our interfaces, there's no such constraints. We can have them do whatever we want them to do. Now, that's not to say we should because we want to leverage the same benefits we have for physical affordances in our digital world. We want the user to be able to look at something digitally and just know how the thing works because that's how they've seen other similar things work. So it's important then that we, we don't break anything that the user has learned in terms of the, the idea of digital affordance. Um, so for example, if we have a, something that looks like a toggle button on the screen, then absolutely it should behave like a toggle button. A concept associated with this is the idea of objects being pliant. And any object that the user can manipulate is a pliant object, it's something they can change. Now that, that includes clicking, pressing, dragging, any sort of manipulation at all that the user can provide to that object, it, we can define that then as a pliant object. How do we indicate to the user that an object is pliant? And if it is something the user can interact with, we need to provide that visual indication. There's a couple of different techniques we can use. Static visual affordances and dynamic visual affordances. The idea of static is it's fixed, it's, it's embedded into how the object actually looks. And the idea of dynamic is that whenever interactions or some conditions are met, we provide some visual feedback to the user that interaction is happening. So I'll give you an example then of uh, well, both of these. For, for static affordance then, that really is just how does the object look? And based on its visual appearance, what does that communicate to the user? So you see the image here at the top, if it looks like a button, well, we have to make sure it behaves like a button because that's what the user will automatically assume. Um, for dynamic affordance then, th this is how the object changes as the user interacts with it. And that visual um, change, that visual feedback is really important then to provide us with indication to the user about what's happening. 
If we think about the physical world, and for example, say a door handle, if we grab it and we try to turn it, if it turns, then that feedback, the physical feedback, is an indication to us that our action is having an effect. And we would normally then associate that something will happen. We've turned it sufficiently far, we can then push it forward or backward and have the object pivot along some other area. If it doesn't move at all, then we might assume, oh, it's, it's locked. So it's a similar idea for dynamic. As the user interacts with it, we want to provide visual dynamic indication as to what effect their interaction has had. So if it's a button and the user presses or pushes down in that button, we want to visually change the appearance of the button to indicate that, to say to the user, I have detected your input and have now updated the button to indicate it's in a, for example, a press condition. You also have the idea of, of early pliant response. And this would be, for example, where the user, if it's say a mouse, and moves the mouse over the button or the control, it changes its visual appearance then. It may highlight or provide some subtle indication to indicate that it has acknowledged that the, the pointer, for example, has moved on top of it. So that's that's an early indication to the users they, they, that their input or their, the potential for input has been detected and then really sort of invites the user to say, oh yes, I can interact with this and if I go ahead and follow on with the interaction, something will happen. So the broad ideas around static affordance, dynamic affordance, be it in terms of as interactions evolve or as in terms of early pliant response to indicate, to provide cues to the user that something is going to happen if they carry on, they're really powerful ways that we can use to shape our interaction with the user. Now that's, that's all we want to include inside this particular section. The key, the most important thing around this is the idea of affordance, that it is something that is learned, it is established, and it's really, really important that, that we don't mess about with it. We don't break any affordances that the user has established. It's fantastic that they have because it saves us an immense amount of work in terms of saying, how do you interact with individual controls? As long as we make sure we are adhering to the established norms and conventions that have been set up for how users can interact with that type of control. In the next section, we're going to go on to look at platform and posture, which really sort of touches upon the wide variety of different types of, of digital interface that we may be designing and the types of setup environment that the user may find themselves in as they use it.